horrible attack, this time in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, we appear to have several bombers who detonated explosives. Some say grenades were thrown. Uh, it is very recently, as I do this live, uh, that this attack happened for in the first 24 hours. Of course, there will be a lot of confusion about uh, the exact numbers and the methods by which this attack was carried out. But either way, it was devastating. At least 28 dead, over 60 injured. This is one of the busiest airports in the world. It's the third busiest airport in Europe. It is the 11th busiest airport in the world. Uh, Ali Veshi had a very good quote about how it is in some ways the center of the world. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But first, there is dramatic footage from the scene. I want to show you one of those videos. What you'll see here is someone taping a closed circuit television that uh, saw one of the bombs going off and then they'll rewind the tape and you'll see it again. So let's watch that first. Okay, so obviously it's, as you're watching that, they're, they're watching it on tape and, and then now they're rewinding the tape. And it is, uh, now you know it's coming, you see those people, they're right there. And obviously they have no idea what's about to happen. And as you look at that, that could be anywhere in the world. And we've all been at airports, you've all been at those places, and you have no idea that that's going to be the last moment on alive for you guys. And so, and look, for me, this is a little bit more personal because for a brief moment, um, uh, one of my relatives said that my parents were flying today. I didn't think they were, but they would fly out of that airport. They're okay. It turns out they didn't. And then um, my best friend that I grew up with, um, was is flying to LA from that airport and when I first heard the news I had a panic of is it today because it's this week that he's flying out so but look when it comes to the bombings here and the shootings here also true you know I was uh, near the movie theater in New Jersey that got shot up a, a day after it got shot up another place I was there a day before the shooting uh, it, it recently we had a shooting at UCLA where a professor was killed uh, there's an active shooter in Denver right now as we speak. But active shooters in America have become so common we don't even report on them uh, regularly anymore. The UCLA shooting happened very close to my house, very close to my parents, I mean, I'm sorry, my kids' schools. So it happens over and over and over again, another terrorist attack. Now we, I have unfortunately another horrific video here and then I'm going to give you the details as best as we know them and why this might have happened. Uh, now, in this case, uh, let's watch the video together and, and I'll, to the best of our abilities, uh, explain to you what happened here. So people are running. They already know uh, that something terrible has happened uh, and they're trying to get away. Uh, warning here that this is going to, this is going to be terrible. Oh. oh, that video just came in, and so that was the suicide bomber. Um, he was hit, and uh, as you can see in that video, again, we're watching it together here. It, it looks like uh, a, one of the police officers had gotten him and he was looking over him, he obviously recognized he's about to detonate the bomb, he ran, thank God he did. Those people were running away from him, thank God he didn't get to them before the police officer got to him. Heroic actions there. Uh, and then that's what happens when a suicide bomber detonates. It appeared that you saw pieces of him all over. Thank God he was slow to detonate and more people were not around when that particular bomb went off. So. This is what we now, as a world, face all together. Now, there are some thoughts about uh, who might have done this. I'll get to that in a second, but let me give you uh, some more explanations of what went down. CNN reporting, it is unclear uh, if this latest total, the 28 dead and the 60 injured, includes the bombers. Turkey's Justice Minister, Bekir Bozda, said one attacker first opened fire with a Kalashnikov, then detonated himself at the airport entrance. Uh, in total, three bombs exploded, the governor told TRT, that is Turkish television. Um, uh, one of them was located just outside a terminal on the pavement. 
while the other was at the security gate at the entrance to the airport. Uh, now that, that is again some of the reports that are coming in, but I've also read reports that they were near the X-ray machines. So, and there are some reports saying there were two of them. There are some that are saying there were three of them. Some saying they did the rifles and then the suicide vests. Some saying that they threw grenades as well. Uh, and now, give you context into the airport. Uh, CNN senior law enforcement analyst Tom Fuentes says Ataturk Airport is one of the most secure airports in the world. Um, now, obviously, that, that this is why we all feel so terribly unsafe throughout the world, because if they can get to at least some portions of one of the safest airports in the world, uh, that of course is disconcerting for all of us. Now, why might they have targeted this airport? Ali Veshi, uh, formerly of CNN, says there are all uh, there are all of the major European and American boutiques there at the airport. So he's been there many, many times. He says you see people of all shapes and colors in all sorts of dress. If you want to target the cosmopolitan nature of Istanbul, this is possibly the most cosmopolitan, heavily po populated part. You can target tourist areas, but this is the part where the world comes together. And so that used to be a point of pride for Turkey. And unfortunately today the terrorists have used it against Turkey. That it's true, uh, Istanbul is half in Europe, half in Asia. It's sometimes called the bridge of civilization. And uh, it is in some ways, since it's in Europe and Asia, it's both the Mediterranean and the Middle East and Muslim, but until this latest government, deeply secular uh, in its founding, uh, aimed to be secular and has been for decades, it is in some ways the center of the world. And as the busiest airport in Turkey and one of the busiest ones in the world, uh, that airport where the whole world crisscrosses is in some ways the center. And so today the terrorists attack the center. Uh, and they've, they've hit us in Paris, they've hit us in London, they've hit us in New York, uh, they've hit us everywhere. Certainly, my God, Iraq has been devastated by terrorists, Syria devastated. Lebanon hit over and over again, Belgium, and the list goes on. Now, um, two more um, accounts uh, here that are from the latest. Um, Raf Sanchez, who's in Jerusalem, um, has spoke to Israeli officials. They say the attack apparently occurred in the departure areas of the airport. Two to four terrorists threw grenades and or IEDs before blowing themselves up. and. Uh, and a witness to the explosions says he saw a police officer wrestle one suicide bomber to the ground before the attacker detonated his bomb. That's according to NBC News. Now, we're not sure if that's the tape you just saw there or if it was another incident. But think about the courage there. That's what I wanted to read that to you. And we've seen this in attacks in Europe, America, and, and now Istanbul, where police officers wrestle a guy with a suicide vest to the ground to make sure no one else gets hurt. Think about that bravery. Okay, so why did it happen? Well, Turkey's been besieged over the last year uh, by two different sets of terrorist groups the PKK, which is Kurdish separatist groups, uh, and ISIS. Now, there is good evidence that the Turkish government had, at a minimum, turned a blind eye to what ISIS was doing for a long time. Uh, they have apparently now. Uh, gone in a new direction. Yes, they have allowed the U.S. to bomb ISIS through airports in Turkey, but now there's even more cooperation with the Russians who are also bombing ISIS, and it appears that uh, the Turkish government has taken a tougher line on ISIS recently. So, in fact, just yesterday, and it is would be surprising if this was a coincidence, Turkey announced better relations with both Russia and Israel on the same day. Turkey and Russia had been having an issue because the Turkish government has shot down a Russian plane. Obviously, the Russians were furious about that, and it had hurt Turkish tourism terribly because the Russians uh, were stopping their tourists from coming to Turkey. It was a huge part of the tourist population in Turkey. Same with Israel, uh, lots of back and forth accusations there, and uh, they had just normalized relations, and now there's a bombing uh, at the heart of Istanbul. So unlikely to be a coincidence. If that is the case, it is more likely, we don't know for sure obviously at this point, but more likely to be ISIS uh, that did this attack as retaliation for Turkey helping Russia, the U.S. and others go after ISIS. Uh, so 
we, we know uh, who the enemy is to some degree. Unfortunately, we know it, but, but a lot of people in America and in the West oftentimes get confused, and I think that they uh, wildly attack the wrong people. So here you couldn't have had a bombing that was closer to me because of my family and friends that are in that exact area. Now, oftentimes when the bombings or the shootings happen and it involves uh, Muslim radical terrorists, and here, like I said, the most likely culprit is ISIS, the reaction that some here in the U.S. have is, let's go get them. Now, first of all, we're already getting ISIS. That's why Turkey just got attacked, because the planes that are bombing ISIS as we speak are taking off from Turkey. So if you mean let's go get ISIS, we're already doing it. But that's not what they mean. And oftentimes they'll say, oh, well, you see, the president doesn't clearly label our enemies. He should talk about how Islam does this, radical Islam, and oftentimes they'll drop the word radical, and they'll say it is a culture uh, that is created by Islam itself, and if you believe the religion, this is the natural result of that. Well, I'm telling you right now that that is foolishness. It is not a matter of getting angry because it's someone, people that are close to you got hurt, or people you identify with got hurt, got killed. And it could have been the people closest to you that got killed. That doesn't mean you should go in a blind rage. We should fight, continue to fight ISIS in the smartest way possible. Not with the greatest amount of vengeance, because that doesn't get you to your goal. So if you're in your blind vengeance, you strike out against Muslims, for example. Well, which ones? The ones who did the bombing or the ones who died in the bombing? Because it would be shocking if the majority of the victims in, in, in a bombing in a Turkish airport weren't Muslim. Now, to insult their families, their loved ones, as they mourn their deaths, and to say Muslims did it, when they were the victims, is preposterous and counterproductive. You've got to be able to use enough judgment to distinguish which Muslims. It, it's certainly not the victim's fault. It's certainly not the entire country of Turkey, which is right now in mourning, and yes, also very, very angry. But 99% of Turkey is Muslim. They didn't do it. They hate that it happened. It happened to them. Don't blame the 99% who were victims. Well, well, by the way, the reality is that number is far, far, 99.9999%. I mean, two or three attackers in a country of over 70 million people. So can you not see how counterproductive it is to, to take those victims and to lump them in with the people who killed them, murdered them, and bombed them today? So let's go after the ideology of fundamentalist radical Islam that weaponizes some people. So there is a smart way to go after that. And yes, sometimes it involves bombings, although I think they're often counterproductive. As the bombings that are happening now in ISIS, we keep getting told over and over again that they are losing and we're winning. Is this what winning looks like? So it's not to say that we are not going to use any force. Of course, when they're doing bombings like this, we have to use some degree of force. I wish our force would be braver, like some of the police officers we just saw there, and smarter. What do I mean by that? Let's use our intelligence uh, agents far more than we do. Let's be far more targeted at the people who are doing these bombings rather than bombing uh, some portions of cities in Syria, which then creates more enemies that we then have to fight off. But even more important than that, let's talk about the exact ideology that causes it and the things that go into that. So yes, religion is certainly a part of that, but not all 1.6 billion. The strain of religion that encourages violence, let us find a way to fight that together. All of us united to say that that violence is unacceptable. And yes, you think, oh, well, that's naive. No, 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 it's not. Sometimes culture does create this. Again, not the whole culture, a part of the culture. And so that part of the culture of this degree of fundamentalism did not exist in the Muslim world anywhere near this degree 40 years ago. But the Saudis and the Americans, because they wanted the Soviets to fight, the, uh, to fight against Muslims and the Muslims to fight against the Soviets, and they thought if we can get the Muslims to be more fundamentalist, they will fight against the godless Soviets. 
We spread propaganda. It's not all our fault, of course not. And it's the ultimate responsibility of the people doing it. But the Saudis and to some degree the Americans and others spread that poison throughout the world. We can counteract that. If they spread that poison, we can spread the opposite message. And yes, their poison worked to some degree. But you know what? The positive message that we spread can also work. So yes, we have to fight it on that level as well. Of course that's going to take a long time. That's bombing is easy. You just drop the bomb. But it doesn't work 90% of the time. And fighting a battle of ideas is much much harder and it takes longer, but that doesn't mean we should do it. It means we should get on that road immediately today. And the way that you do that is you encourage secularism. You say the state and religion should not be combined. You encourage a uh, a better interpretation, by better I mean, look, I, I'm not a religious person, so I don't agree with any of the texts, whether it's the Quran or the Bible. But if you do believe in those texts, there are both terrible things in those texts and wonderful things in those texts. So let's focus on the parts where we help each other, and yes, that's in the Quran, yes, it's in the Bible, where we help the poor, where we say, where we say everyone should be equal, and yes, that's in the Quran, yes, that's in the Bible. The ugly parts are all there also, but let us make sure that people don't go down that dark path and to the best of our abilities, make sure they go down a better path. So that is the long term answer, so it's not an easy one today and if someone you know or love got killed today, it's not going to be much of a remedy for your pain today, but at least we can begin to prevent it in the future and we've got to start that battle, the true battle of ideas today.